Hello, hello. Today we are on our way to our favorite ski hill again, High One Ski Resort. And we're gonna make an in-depth review of what it's like to ski as a beginner, an intermediate, and an expert. And we're also gonna look at like some of the things like the, the ski house and the other facilities just to uh, kind of give a brief overview of what High One has to offer for everyone. High One Resort is about a three to four hour drive east of Seoul, nestled in the mountains of Gangwon-do, near two small towns named Sabuk and Gohan. If you don't have a car, there are also shuttle buses leaving from Seoul and other major cities. There's a link in the description to the shuttle bus information. Ramona, I can't shake the simplest feeling. For starters, High One is the ski resort with the highest elevation in Korea, and it boasts a vertical of 643 meters or about 2100 feet. In our experience, it has the best overall snow and terrain out of every ski resort here. It has two different bases, the valley and the mountain base. In our opinion, it's best to park in the valley, as you can park in the basement of the lodge and take the elevator up with ease. As far as food options go, in the valley there is a cafeteria on the second floor where meals are about 15,000 won. On the third floor you can find Mom's Touch Chicken Burgers, Quiznos Sandwiches, or Mr. Pizza. There are also other options at the Mountain Base and Mountain Hub, so you have plenty of options wherever you are on the mountain. We wanted Quiznos, but they ran out of supplies, so we had to go with risottos from Mr. Pizza for about 9,000 won each. <laughs> it is better than the pizza. The most important thing of the day is the, the monster energy drink right there. Not sponsored, but uh, before I start the day skiing, I always grab a can of this and just uh, scarf it down. Yeah, then you're ready to go for the slopes. Let's start out with beginners. High One has learning areas next to both the valley and mountain bases for absolute beginners. And then for people who are ready to get on the lift, there are three main slopes. As far as the best slope to learn on, I'd go with Athena 3, which is the slope connecting the mountain base and valley base. This run is pretty narrow, but it's less crowded and it's not very steep, making it really easy for beginners. The only unfortunate thing is you have to take the gondola each time, which can definitely be a pain, and you'll be waiting in lines with people who aren't skiing or boarding either. Now we go up to Zeus 2, which starts at the very top of High 1 and can be accessed from the Hera Lift. This run starts off with amazing views of the surrounding mountains and valleys. It's a step up from Athena 3 and has steeper terrain, but it attracts a lot more skiers and boarders, meaning that you'll spend a lot more time focusing on avoiding others. It's not always this busy, and when it's less crowded, I'd say it's the most entertaining run for beginners. If you continue straight at the bottom of Zeus 2, you arrive at the top of Zeus 3. This is a really wide run that's perfect for beginners. However, on this day there were so many people for winter break that it was an absolute gong show. This is the most dangerous skiing of my life. Again, we skied here for a month last year and never saw it this crowded. So normally this would be the perfect long slope for beginners looking for a lot of space to practice. There were also three intermediate slopes open in January, with two of them being on the Harrow lift. Let's start with Harrow 1. This is a typical intermediate groomer. Somewhat forgettable, and only worth lapping if it has the least amount of people on it. Now we have Hera 2. This is the slope we skied the most last year as Eugen transformed from a beginner to an intermediate skier. Technically it's an intermediate advanced slope, but don't let that fool you as it's basically the same as Hera 1 except with a bit more terrain variety and it feels longer. As an intermediate, this should be your choice to lap if you choose to ski the Hera lift. Let's go all the way to the mountain hub now to Athena 2. 
You can download on the gondola from the top of the hair lift to the mountain hub as it's not possible to ski there. Athena 2 is the ultimate intermediate slope at High 1. There aren't many people, it's pretty long, it has its own lift, and there's enough variety to keep intermediate skiers and boarders entertained for a while before stepping it up to the advanced slopes. On the day we went for this review, there were only two advanced slopes open as they were still making snow for Hera 3 which is also a fun run that we recommend. Luckily Apollo 1 was open which was long and ended with a steeper section for some good entertainment. For intermediate skiers or boarders, this is a great place to fine tune your skills before taking it to the steepest slopes. This brings us to the final slope that was open, Victoria 2. As someone who grew up skiing a lot, this was the first time in Korea where I could feel a bit of adrenaline. There are almost no people, so you just get the charge at your own pace. That's probably the hardest run in all of Korea. Probably the steepest and longest runs in all of Korea. And the snow is pretty good because it's pretty high up and cold here. Yeah, if you're a freestyle skier or boarder, don't come here. But if you just want to ride, then it's great. Let's go! As a bonus to this review, we want to share a really good way to have a great month skiing or riding in Korea. We lived at the May Hills Resort last year for a month, which does long-term rentals for 1.2 million won a month. This isn't exactly cheap, but it's less than 5 minutes away from the hill and the living conditions are excellent. This is the kind of place you get, and you get a full-on kitchen here, get a nice bed, balcony outside, get your own TV, and a laundry rack, and a table. The bathroom is fully western style. You got a shower booth there. The good thing about living here is there is a really nice e-mart grocery store uh, that's not too far. So if you have a car, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get to e-mart. And that's where Eugen and I did a lot of our My shopping. My favorite e-mart in Korea. If you live in Korea, you're probably wondering why we are getting so excited about e-mart. For some reason the e-mart in Taebaek just seems to stock their shelves better than every other e-mart we've been to. For example, they have more options for things like nuts. We were able to find import American potatoes last year. The beer selection is top notch. And they just have random import ingredients everywhere that are possible to find at most e-marts. But it's rare to find them all inside one of them. Combination pizza. Chicken. Pamba. And the most important thing. Like a lion! This is Korean Yangnyeom chicken. The original Korean fried chicken style. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you'd like to support us, please like the video and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. We'll see you next week.